Okay, I have to had to redo this video because my reflection was showing. Um, anyway, uh, as I mentioned in the comments in my last video, I won my appeal with, against YouTube with the strike and removal of a video that was from last year and had to do with a man who was uh, competing in the women's event in the Paralympics. It was a track and field thing. And it was false flagged as harassment and whatever it was. Um, bullying. And I fought it. And I fought it yesterday morning when I got the strike. And they upheld or they uh, they upheld my appeal, so they reinstated the video. So that's good news, and I think maybe YouTube, hopefully it's going to be a little more careful before they zap out people just because a, a group of people don't live in reality and don't like what you have to say, and so they want to brigade and, and false flag you and get your channel taken down. I've had this channel since 2008. I think October of 2008. And so um, I know that some gender critical, I guess you can call them, feminist types have had channels taken down. And I notice, it's not true in every case, but I notice the ones from Canada especially are the ones that get targeted. And Canada doesn't have the free speech laws and tradition that the, that the United States does, or even the UK does. And so I wonder if that doesn't weigh into part of why they get zapped out. But on the other hand, it might be that they're just more vulnerable to being brigaded. I, I use the Reddit term brigaded. I think it's a good word. And it's bullying is what it is. Try to bully you out into silence. And what good is it, dude? There's there's oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of YouTube channels and other channels on other platforms. And you're not going to shut women up. They've had it. So it's a futile attempt. And if the Twitter thing with Elon Musk is any indication, we may have turned a corner on this whole nonsense. Not that I'm wild about Elon Musk or any billionaire, you know, trying to manipulate public discourse. But at least it's better than this crap where they just get rid of you willy-nilly. Anyway, um, and speaking of this, all this stuff, the, the, a teacher in Florida, she was a first-year art teacher, she got the sack. Because she made inappropriate remarks regarding her sex life, that she was pansexual, and she had these kids um, create some kind of flag art project. And the school district said, no, this isn't appropriate, the discussion wasn't appropriate, and they let her go. And of course, she was a first-year teacher, and this is true in every school district, in every school di in every uh, state in the United States is they can let you go for any reason or no reason if you're probationary. If you're post probationary, then you have the right to a hearing. And that's all that is. That alleged tenure, they don't have that. But if you live in a state that where the quote unquote unions are just weak as hell, then they're practically worthless. It's a rubber stamp operation, and you have to go the civil route, if you can find an attorney that'll take it. I learned all this stuff the hard way. But anyway, she was a first-year teacher, so they let her go, and it's pretty clear, you know, the district was in the right, and you have to ask, what the hell was she doing talking about her sexuality and what was she doing having the kids talk about theirs? That is such a serious ethical breach that it's a no-brainer she got the sack. And to me, and then furthermore, she did, she, she's in a right-to-work state 
and so the unions are just, you know, they're just basically they're subsidiaries of school districts because they don't have the money because teachers could choose not to pay and pay union dues. And so this one didn't. So the union couldn't do anything anyway because she's post-probationary. And then it's obvious she never took an ethics course because the first damn thing the teacher should recognize is you keep your personal life out of the classroom, just like you keep your religion out of it, just like you keep your political beliefs out of it. Just keep it out. Just keep it out. That's not what you're being paid to do. And definitely you don't ever bring, try to talk, have middle school kids talk about their sex lives. Not high school kids, not middle school kids, <laughs> certainly not elementary school kids. These kids should be focused on other things. Sexuality can wait. It can wait. It can wait decades. All right. There's other things for kids to focus on. So she was complaining, and then she had, there was some advocate at the end of this video um, said her concern was for the mental health of the transgender non-binary, which there's no such thing as either, students who were in Ms. Mrs. Scott's classes. Yeah, she was married to a guy. And then this woman believes the school district made a mistake. I would like to see a statement from the school board recognizing they have to have a mental health counselor come in and speak with the children impacted by their actions toward this teacher. Well, you know what? When I left my school here to move to another one, I had to explain it to them. You know, I had to tell the kids. And that was hard. But the kids will recover from it. And she knows good and well, I don't know if she's a lawyer, this Crystal, whatever her name is. She knows good and well, there, this teacher doesn't have, a, this former teacher doesn't have a leg to stand on legally. She's out of luck. And uh, she could have had her license sanctioned. And as it is, said she was non-renewed. It's, it's basically being fired. You have to disclose your non-renewed. Um, to any employer, and that's going to hurt you in the job market. It's not as bad as a dismissal, because a dismissal, and they could get rid of you there. I mean, I know this for a fact, and that follows you around too, at least for a few years, and you have to move some distance, or maybe even out of state to resume your career. But if you had something that had your license sanctioned, then lots of luck ever finding a teaching job ever again because it's um it follows you everywhere and they have a uh a clearinghouse a database which records the terminations of all teachers terminations well i should say the terminations the license sanctions of every teacher in the country and so the license is the most important thing you want to protect. Because you do any breach on that of ethics, that follows you for life. So anyway, that is all I have to say about that. And just be ethical. Just keep the sex life out of the classroom. Don't talk about it to your kids. The kids. Don't have the kids share with you. It's just not okay under any circumstances. The end.